So today we are looking at bearings, okay? We are going to be measuring bearings, okay? We're going to be calculating bearings and we are going to be measuring bearings, okay? Drawing, calculating, measuring. But to make it easier to, sh to obviously demonstrate, to show you, we're going to be using the visualizer, okay? So bear with me. You can see here that I have got each location needs a north line, okay? All bearings are written as three figures. For example, 28 degrees is written as 028. All bearings are written or measured in a clockwise direction. Uh, a 360 degree protractor makes bearings that a little bit easier. Keyword is the word from, okay? And you put the center of your protractor here. Um, when measuring bearings, join the locations first. There are 360 degrees around a point and the parallel line angles, okay? The rules come into play. As you can see, you need a 360 degree protractor sharp pencil and a ruler. You'll also notice I have got one of these 180 degree protractors with me. Okay, you can answer any bearings questions using one of these. Okay, however, I will show you very clearly in a minute how much easier things are when you use a 360 degree one. I've also got a highlighter. So best thing to do first, jot those points down and then we're gonna crack on. You might wanna press pause um, just to get those points down, because I will be referring to all of them at certain points. So I have got a variety of different questions for us. Okay, first one then. A and B are two rescue centers shown on a map with a scale of one centimeter to five kilometers. So I'm gonna highlight that because that is very, very important. Measure and find the straight line distance in kilometers from A to B. Okay, uh, a couple of points I put on there. When measuring bearings, join the locations first. Have to use a ruler and a sharp pencil. So I'm going to be joining these together first. You will notice both of these locations have north lines. Okay, you know your compass points. So we've got north, east, south, and west. I'm sure you've got a different way to remember those. Um, so then if we have to measure this now, okay, doesn't say to use a ruler, doesn't say to use a protractor, but if we're measuring a straight line, obviously it's got to be a ruler. Okay, we've also got a scale of one centimeter to five kilometers. So middle of the point, middle of that point. So I then have 11.6, okay. So I'll put that here, 11.6 centimeters. Okay, so measure and find the straight line distance in kilometers, but that is centimeters. So we have 11.6, multiply that by five. Okay, so we'll use a little method on the side here. We've got 11.6, multiply by five. Six fives are 30, zero down, carry the three. That's my point. Five times one is five, add the three, eight, and then five times one is five. So we have 58 kilometers. Okay, so that's the straight line distance. Okay, it doesn't say on here about calculated invariance. Okay, but let's have a play around with this protractor. Okay, for demonstration purposes, you'll notice, look, the way I've held it naturally, I have made sure that zero degrees is at the top. Okay, remember three figures, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so let's go for the bearing of B from A. So it's from A, we've got to put our location or our point in the middle of the protractor. You will see... I have made sure that north line is going through zero. I've taken my time. I have been extremely accurate. Following this around, you'll see I'm going on the outside because the numbers are increasing clockwise as well. You can see that we have 68 degrees. Okay, so this one here would be 0, 068 degrees. Okay, just for demonstration purposes, if I wanted to work out this one as well, 
make sure the center of the point is in the middle of the protractor, make sure the north is on zero. Now, I know you'd be tempted now to go this way. However, bearings clockwise, make your way all the way around. Okay, making sure this is kept still, you'll see we have 243. So clockwise, 243 degrees. Now, if you had 180 degree protractor, you will see this is difficult because 243 degrees is greater than 180 degrees. Okay, if you had one of these protractors, you would have to calculate the back bearing. So calculate this part and then subtract that from 360. However, I would just much rather use one of these, okay? So invest in one of these, they're only a pound or two. It makes life a lot easier. Consider how many marks are available, then it's a very good investment. So let's look at this question down here. A monument is on a bearing of 136 degrees from A. That's important and on a bearing of 219 degrees from B. Plot the position of the monument and mark it M. Okay, so 136 degrees from A. So, protractor on A. The middle of the protractor needs to go on the point, on the location. Make sure the line for zero is going through the north line. 136. On the outside, because my um, the numbers are increasing, 136 is there very accurately. I'm drawing a dot. Take my ruler. I can then join and even extend that line because anywhere on that line is 136 degrees from A. But also on a bearing of 219 degrees from B. So protractor middle of the protractor on the location, zero through the north line, 219, all the way around past 180, 219 is there. Let's use the ruler from B straight through. Okay, now this monument is here. Okay, it's where the two lines intersect. So just to show the examiner very clearly with a nice arrow, I'm going to write monument. Well, it says mark it with M, so let's just mark it with an M there. Done, it's been very clear. Okay, there's no way that examiner can drop any marks for me there. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Here then, um, P and Q are two ports on a map with scale one centimeter, eight kilometers. Highlight the important bits. Find the straight line distance in kilometers from P to Q. Straight line distance must be a ruler. Let's join them up first. Okay, so in centimeters or in millimeters. I have 97 millimetres, so just to check, 9.7, okay, so we have 9.7 centimetres, scale, sorry, is 1 to 8, so let's multiply just by 8, let's use our method on the side, 7, 8 to 56, 6, 9, carry the 5, 9, 8 to 72, Add the 5, 77. So we have 77.6 kilometres. A ship is on a bearing of 147 degrees from P. That's our key word again. And a bearing of 21 degrees from Q. Mark the position of the ship with an X. Okay, right. Common sense now. This is a ship. Is it going to be in the sea or on the land? Common sense would tell us it'll be in the sea. So if you've worked it out and you've worked out it's going to be in the land, then obviously you've made a mistake somewhere. Okay. So the tractor, 147 degrees from P. From P. 
middle of the protractor on the location, north line, zero degrees, 147 is there. Let's use a ruler from the location through the point, and I'm also going to extend that line just in case. So anywhere on that line, it's 147 degrees. 21 degrees from Q, from Q. Center of the protractor on the location, zero going to the north line, 21, 10, 21. And then mark it with an X, it must be there. Okay, it's all about being extremely clear. Okay, very clear. You'll notice I've been extremely accurate with my ruler, my protractor. I'm hope hopefully you've seen now how much easier it is with a 360 degree protractor. You'll notice every time I've used these, I've always used the numbers on the outside. Okay, no need to use the inside ones because we're not going anti-clockwise. We are only going clockwise. It is as if these protractors are built and designed for bearings specifically. Okay, so you should have enough information here to have a go at a few of these yourselves. Okay, I do have one more question which I'm going to go through quickly for you. So a map shows a scale diagram of a part of the North Sea coastline. A ship is on a bearing of 35 degrees from Aberdeen and 290 degrees from Stavanger in Norway. By drawing suitable lines on the diagram, find and mark the position of the ship. Okay, 35 degrees from Aberdeen. Center, zero, 35 dot. Extend the line. Anywhere on that line, 35 degrees from Aberdeen. 290 degrees from this place in Norway. Around the outside, 290 is there. Okay, there's no way it could be there for that 290 there because remember it's clockwise. As it's bigger or greater than 180, it's got to be on this side. Okay, I'm taking that away because I've drawn my dot. Going straight through. Find and mark the position of the ship. Just like that. Practice makes perfect. Take your time with being accurate with a protractor, and I really hope that helps. Have a go.